and we've got a few more minutes. I'm just getting my water buckets together. So you want to have two containers, one that you'll keep with clear water and one you will use to uh, clean your brushes off. Um, you'll want some paper towel and some brushes. Now I'm just probably, let's see, I will use a number five if I can find it. It's hiding here. I'll use a number five and a number three. Number five, just because actually it's bigger than a five. I think it's an eight, just because it's a little going to cover a little bit bigger background. And we've got some different greens. I've just put them on a card. So I have a sap green. Emerald green, viridian green, and hooker's green. And it's up to you. You don't have to use those specific colors. If you were to take and mix ochre with any of those colors, so if I put ochre on my brush and mix a bit of ochre with all of them, I'm going to come up with brighter or duller colors of green, just by adding a little bit of ochre. You can see this one's got quite a bit darker. Whoops, this one. So if I mix them together, just with a bit of water. I get a different variety again. So if you don't want to really really bright tree, you could add a lot of ochre to a sap green. And you just get a duller color. So we are just one minute away from go time from the start. Welcome to all those that are with us. Um, we have a new student on today from the UK and she was wondering where other people are from the UK. So if you are from the UK and you want to type something in the chat of where you're located or somewhere close to your address, not your exact address, that's that would be confidential confidentiality. Um, but just just your town or close by would be good. Oh, see, there's someone from Bam, Scotland. There we go. And London. So there. See, so hopefully, hopefully you're able to see that there are other people that are close by, that are around, that are uh, your friends in this together as well. So we're right at the hour. So welcome. My name is Kathy. I'm a watercolorist. I teach this watercolor class Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, this is just a regular thing that we do. We get together, we're like-minded artists and we're sharing time together. You'll want to have two water buckets, one clear, one for a mixing color or, or rinsing your brushes off, some paper towel if you've got it, and some brushes, just a couple of just plain brushes, nothing too, too uh, outlandish. And we'll just go through step by step with the watercolor process. We're going to make some Christmas cards today. This will be, they're, they're already on showcased on the front, but if you haven't seen them, uh, if you're not seeing them there, then these are the two cards we're going to do together. So they are a six by nine folded in half. And you'll just want to remember which side your card opens on so that you can put your picture uh, the, the right way. I have painted them upside down. So I'm a testimonial to um, why you would need to keep track of which way your card opens. We are just going to take a few deep breaths. If you have some things on your mind that are troubling you or things that have been going on, just take the time just to set that aside, put that in the parking lot. And for now, give yourself this one hour gift of time. So we'll just take a deep breath in and hold it at the top of the breath and then we'll just release and it can be fast or slow that's up to you 
but so we'll do that three times. So take a deep breath in, hold it and release. And just drop those shoulders down. You can see there's a good span of space there. We hold a lot of tension there. We'll take another deep breath in and hold it and release. And a third deep breath in and hold it and release. And hold your brushes lightly. You don't need to have a, a tight grip on your brushes. You'll find that the lighter you hold it, the better you'll get for flow of paint. So we'll get right into it, right into the painting. We're going to do some Christmas cards. I'm not sure if you're able to see what I've got on my canvas. I'll just drop it down a little bit, you can see. So we'll start with the top one, which just has some birds, just some little birds on a wire. And I'm not going to wet the whole canvas, but I'm just going to do an oval shape all around. I'm going right over top of the birds, just with clear water. And as I said, I'm not worried about covering over those birds and I'm not necessarily wanting to go to the outside edge. And I may make some jagged edges here and there. Just water. You want it a little bit shiny so that the paint starts to flow. And the picture that I have done is in sort of light greens with ochre mixed in, a little bit of pink in there, a little bit of blue. So just have fun with the colors that you're going to put on. I'll start with ochre on mine. So I'm just going to put some ochre on there because it's wet. You can see it's starting to move already. And I'm going to put a few dots of green. A little bit of phthalo blue. And I think I'll put in some cadmium red here and there. I'm just going to tap off the bottom. I've got a little bit of excess there. And because I want this paint to run, I'm going to turn my canvas sideways. I've got ochre, I've got a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of red. I'm just going to let this move around. I'm going to tap on a few extra colors while it's still wet and still running. So I get a nice flowy background. So on the key is to do this with water and let it move. and let it flow. So if I start to see any hard lines like this one, I'm just gonna tap that so that that hard line goes away. And I'm just going to continue to roll it and let those colors flow to give a real soft background. So where I have excess, I'm just going to tap off just with paper towel, just a little bit at the bottom. I just want that color. So we have lots of time here to, for you to move your canvas around and let that flow. Now I'm missing a little bit of red. My red has blended in, so I'm just going to tap on just the slightest touches of red. And again, I'm moving to let that flow. So not to worry if your picture doesn't look like your neighbors or your friends or other people's, they're all going to be a little bit different. Be 
because I'm on an easel, I've got a little bit of extra draining down the bottom. So I'm just going to touch that really lightly with a paper towel just to absorb the excess so it's not such a dark line at the bottom. Again, I see you can see from the water that I put on that it's still running a bit. So again, I'm going to go back and just really lightly, almost not even touching the canvas with the paper towel, just, just lightly letting that excess be absorbed. So it takes a little bit of practice to be able to just let that color flow. Just be patient with it. It will, and it may even, in my case, it may still be continuing to move even a little bit more. And one of the keys is just to let it do whatever watercolor wants to do, not to try and be in control of it. And then we're going to leave that one alone and move on next to our little Christmas trees down the bottom. And all I've given you for a drawing are just the sticks. All you have are just the branches, but we're not going to paint the branches first. We're actually going to paint the trees. So your trees can be the perfect Christmas tree shape. I'm just going to just do a couple of them on the back of a, a card to show you. So you can have the perfect Christmas tree shape if you, maybe it's not perfect. You can have like a cedar hedge type tree. Let's try another paper. So you could have the shape of a perfect Christmas tree, you know, that triangle, if you like. You could do a cedar hedge type tree. You could do a Charlie Brown tree. Just a few twi twigs. Or there's one little tiny one. You could just do a little tiny Christmas tree. And you can do all different colors. I've only shown you that in hooker's green. You could use hooker's green, emerald green, viridian green, sap green. You could make an olive green using ochre and any of the other colors. And we're just going to give these trees a little bit of shape. So I'm using an olive green on the first one. Just an olive green right down to the line. I think I'll use a viridian green for this tree and I'm just going to give it some sparse branches. I'm not going to fill it right in. If I want a deeper green, I can add a little bit of blue to a green and I get a really dark green. So just by adding a bit of blue. If I add red to a green, then I get a different green altogether. So this one I'm going to fill in right across. So that's just by adding a little bit of red into the green.
And I've got two more, three more trees to do. So I'm not really even filling in the whole tree. If I add ochre and green, I get something that would be a blue spruce color. And if I add ochre and burnt umber, I get a tree that needs a little bit of help. But probably no one would pick that tree in the tree lot. So again, because I'm on an easel, I've got a little bit of extra paint down the bottom, just running because my paint's a little bit wet. So I'm just gonna use a paper towel just to absorb that extra. And I just touch on the little bubble of paint. I don't rub too much on the canvas. When you hand paint a Christmas card and you give it to someone, you put a lot of your heart into it, a lot of you into it. And so it's a very special gift. So be proud of the work that you're doing. And this, if this is causing you any anxiety, just take a deep breath and lighten your grip on your brush. Before we move back up to the top Christmas card, we'll just paint that little bird on the top of the tree. Hopefully you were able to see that little bird. There's just a little bird sitting on the top of the tree. We're going to give that time to dry. So for those that, that are ready, we're going to move to the top card back up to the top. And as long as your canvas is dry, the paint is fairly dry, we can go ahead and we can work with black. So I'm just going to double check on mine. If that paint is not dry, then we don't want to put black on our canvas. Oh, it looks like mine is dry. So what I'm doing is just making a line between each bird with black paint. So this is actually a string for lights. So 
So this is wet on dry as our canvas or our paper is dry. And then we can start to paint the silhouette of each bird. So just follow the outline and give them all a little beak. And what I've done in the drawing for you is put all of their beaks going in different directions. So they all have a different Christmas agenda. And again, if you're painting and you're painting on your background and painting something so specific gives you a little bit of, of anxiety or stress, just take a deep breath, drop your shoulders, release that grip on your brush. This is just a piece of paper. You can repeat this. I'm sure anyone that received your Christmas card would be quite happy with it. It's us that give it that identity. So just be happy with your work. And if your bird starts to get a little bit bigger because you've gone out of the lines, good for you. All birds aren't the same size. And believe it or not, we're almost at half time. And so while we're at this point, um, you can continue with your birds. And I will read you today's May You Know Joy Meditations for Everyday Living brought to you by Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. And today's word is clarity. So may you know clarity of vision and purpose. When the world becomes obscured and untrustworthy, may you know your own soul, your own truth, and your own heart. May this clarity be your compass as you take the steps of your journey. Trust this clear vision and make firm choices that are, that are in the interest of your greatest good. May you know clarity of vision and purpose. When the world becomes obscured and untrustworthy, may you know your own soul, your own truth, in your own heart. May this clarity be your compass as you take the steps of your journey. Trust this clear vision and make firm choices that are in the, in in the interest of your greatest good. May you know clarity. It was worth reading twice. I quite liked that. What a perfect sentiment for our world today for our world today yes clarity now that we've got those birds on there hopefully you've got your little birds done hopefully your top paint was dry if not keep working on your trees down below and as we work on the trees down below we're going to start with black paint i'm, I'm using wet on dry so i'm using my a black paint, my number three brush, which I find is, um, is capable for me to do fine enough lines. And I've got the lines drawn already. So if I put that close, you can see one tree. There are, some, let's take that big tree there. There are some lines already on there. And so I'm going to use my black paint and paint those lines right where they sit. So there's the center of my tree and I'm just going to start to fill in and I don't have to do every line. 
some, I could miss a spot. It's entirely up to me. It's entirely up to you. It's your tree. If you want to do the whole tree all the way across, if I do that, if I go all the way across for this tree, it will look a little bit different. If I want to do every line, then that's okay too. And we'll continue with the other trees. And I'm running some past the outside edges of my green. And some are smaller. I've got a little Charlie Brown tree. I just want to put some of these branches in here. And I've got my little stick tree, my little brown and ochre tree. I'm going to use brown in the middle of that tree. And if you find that black is too stark and it's not black that you want, you can use a different color. You can use green. So that's green in that tree, just a different green than the tree. And if I want to soften that up, I can just add a little bit of water and just blend that out. And I've got my spruce tree, so I'm going to put blue in that spruce tree. And I've got this little faded tree in the side, and I'm just going to give that some lines. It's going to take a little bit of that blue in there, but I'm also going to add a little bit of water just to soften that one as well. If I think my black is too stark, I can actually, I can go back and put a little bit of extra green on there just to tone out some of that excess, that heavy black. And just play with your trees if you want to add or change the tone of your tree a little bit. I've added a little bit of ochre to my tree on the end here just to soften it up a little bit. This is kind of playtime with your trees. So if you're ready with your, with your trees, we're going to let that dry. 
and we're going to move back up to the top card and we're going to put some Christmas balls for Christmas lights on the wire. So I put five red. And I think I'm going to do ochre because ochre will show up more clearly. So these are more lights on the string. And I like odd numbers, so I put five and five. But if you've got your lights on where your birds are, we're going to leave that. I, we're going to move back down um, because we'll want to put adjoining lines to each of those light bulbs. But in order to do that, we need to let that paint dry. If you put a black line leading to that bulb, it would probably draw the black into your color. So give it time to dry. And so we'll move back down below. And I'm going to give some nice shining light around my bot, around the top of my center tree. What color did you use? That's ochre. Oh, okay. I don't know. That's ochre. And if you wanted to use something even brighter, you could use a yellow. Or I think some of you have gold, like a quin gold, quinacridone. It's a nice bright color as well. Or a hands of yellow white or hands of yellow light. If I put that around, you can see that's even brighter. That's shining from the top of the tree. Nice big ball on the top. Up to you if you want to put a different color. I'm going to start to decorate some of my trees. So a few of them are going to have some decorations. And I'd like to do a baseline for the bottom of my trees. I'm just using a burnt umber just to go along the bottom. And it doesn't necessarily have to be straight because the bottoms of all of the trees are in straight. And if some of the colors are above or below, that's okay. And for that bottom card, I'm just going to put happy holidays at the bottom. I think I said Merry Christmas on the example, but I'm just going to say Happy Holidays. So I've just, I've just put it in there with pencil. And now I'm just going to go over with my brush and black paint. If you have a marker and you prefer to do it with marker, that's fine. But I'm just going over my lettering.
and you can say Merry Christmas or Happy New Year or whatever it is that you like to say. My little bird is probably dry, so I'm going to give him a little eye and I'm going to make his beak black so it stands out a little more. And if I move back up top, I want to put a little string from each light. And because it's not completely straight, it looks more like a string of lights. And then my top one, I've just written, put in a print in pencil, holiday cheer. And so I'm just going to go back with black paint and just paint over my pencil. And if you are perfect at calligraphy, good for you, you have my my, um, I, I'm honoring you, good for you. Mine aren't always perfect, but that's okay. So then we have some holiday cheer, some little birds on a wire welcoming you and saying, hi, I'm here, Merry Christmas, or Happy Hanukkah, Shawai or Noel, or whatever it is that you say. And this is where we decide where and in what color, what placement would we. So I've just used a faded green in my picture for the top card where I put my signature. And the bottom part, I think I'm going to use that blue and just put my signature underneath that little tree. So it's entirely up to you where you sign your picture, but do sign your picture, even though you're giving it as a card, especially since you're giving it as a card. Yeah, you could even uh, glue a ribbon onto your card, which would be nice. There's lots of different things. There's so many ideas for cards. And I will say to you, that's what we can do in one hour. So good for you. So if you've signed your picture, perfect. And another day, another day of painting together. Thank you, thank you so much, everyone.